Hey guys, welcome to the TV show show where we talk about great TV shows and today we're starting talking about the legend of Korra on Nickelodeon. Yes. Whoa! Yes, yeah. we've been waiting for this moment. Yeah. Huh? Now, a lot of people have been asking us to talk about this show and we're really excited to do it. Uh, just a bit of background. I'm very new to this show. Whoa. Raina and Will are huge fans and they watched all of Avatar The Last Airbender. The Legend of Korra is a sequel series to Avatar The Last Airbender, which ran for three seasons on Nickelodeon. Yep. It takes place in the same world one and a half generations later. It's a world where uh, people can bend the elements to their will. There are four elements. What are the elements? Earth! Earth. Fire, fire! Air! air water. water! Yeah! These rings together can create the perfect <laughs> wrong show, little girl. Wrong show. And there's also one person, the Avatar. Who is the main character in the story, is supposed to be able to control and bend all four elements, which is exactly how they are supposed to bring balance into the world. They can balance out using the powers of all these elements and therefore... Do cool stuff because Rava, the spirit of light, lives within the Avatar. That's very true. From generation actually. to generation, we have always lived Rava in us. Now, we're picking up in season three of The Legend of Korra. At the end of season two, Korra uh, left portals open between the spirit world and the human world, and now they kind of coexist. And right. for the first time in 10,000 years, spirits now exist on the human world. An important thing to point out in the first series, Avatar, uh, Aang, the previous Avatar, was the last airbender in existence. There was only one, and now... Genocide. In, yeah. Now, in season three of Legend of Korra, because of these new portals, all these new airbenders are popping up. It's a really big development. It's mm -hmm. one and a half generations after the last airbender story. However, there are still, there's only one family yes. of airbenders. The only it's airbenders, family. Yeah, the only airbenders were Aang's children. Yeah, offspring. Now that there's spirits, for whatever reason, Airbenders are popping up everywhere, and right. Korra has now made it her mission to find all these airbenders and and t get them to come to these air temples and rebuild the air nation. And I'm really, really glad that they're coming back because it, it gives Korra and all of her friends something new to do. It's not just like, what's the next big fight? What's the next big yeah. villain? And now they get to travel. They get to travel the world so and have adventures, uh, which is something that was really key in the first series, oh, yeah. but mm -hmm. Legend of Korra has been more like, you know, Know, we're stuck in a place Republic dealing City. with a problem. Yeah. We should tell you about the characters of the show if you haven't seen it. Yeah, so the main character, Korra, who is the Avatar, is so super, super different from Aang. Um, she is a little bit older, so she deals with a lot of different problems that Aang never actually experiences or we never get to see him experience. Um, there She's the is, opposite of him, I she think. She kind of is, yeah. She is pretty hot-headed, yeah. very much the opposite of what Aang was, who is very like childish but also still cautious at the same time. Um, but because of Korra's age, she also, I feel like, gets into frivolous problems, like boy problems. I feel like that was highly unnecessary. Yeah. In like the it's not season, frivolous. But... When you're a teenager, it, your hormones are Lots raging. I don't care how many things you can bend, you can't bend hormones. You can't bend your feelings. I'll give you one of those for Respect. that. I'll give you that for that. Then we have Mako and Bolin, who at first I was like, I don't think, I don't, I don't, I was like, I don't think I really like these guys. What? But over time, I started to love them, especially Bolin. Bolin is like love the Sokka Bolin. of this. He's really uh, he funny. Is, he is. He's got jokes for days, yeah. and I love him. I love him. He's so quirky. And Mako, he was, he's, he was kind of the Zuko because he was like, oh, I'm angsty. He's also a firebender. Look at my hair. And he's also a firebender. And then they develop into some cool characters. He has cool <laughs> you hair. Look at my hair. His hair goes like that. <laughs> and yeah. his eyebrows are like, hey. no Everyone attempt. wants to bang Mako because Mako is handsome. Yeah. Uh, he doesn't do come anything. On, but he doesn't but do anything. He's boring. He's dated Korra and he's also dated Asami, who is a non bender but owns this uh, this big she's a technology oh, she's a in or industry she company. Owns future industry. All right, you yes. gotta date the Avatar or Millionaire. This dude is like, Killing it. He's killing it, and now he's just single and awkward, and he doesn't know how to be around either of them. The other main character you should know is Tenzin, who is the uh, youngest son of Avatar Aang. He is he was the last Airbender uh, in existence after Avatar Aang died, and he has three children who are also Airbenders. And now he's trying to gather all these new Benders together to rebuild the Air Nation. It's very important to him. He is Korra's mentor, and he was uh, he was kind of like blustery and not my favorite character until mm. last year he conquered his demons and realized he didn't have to be his father and now he is a better dad to his children he's a better mentor to Korra and he's really becoming a great character in his own right and yeah. the greatest airbender on earth right now he's every time that they have him actually fight airbender. somebody it's amazing. he's awesome it's, it's, it's 
Yeah. I'd so say. then this season when they did that airbending street performance in yeah. an attempt to get new airbenders and like he stripped he off, off his, his, his robe <laughs> and I'm like, damn, okay, Tenzin, you cut for 40. Yeah. I'd smash. Um, <laughs> you would smash I'd it? I'd smash. <laughs> like so hell, but I'd smash. You let us know in the comments. Would you smash it, Tenzin? Would you, <laughs> would smash, you smash Tenzin? <laughs> So hetero, but would you smash? <laughs> Airbending didn't just come to all these random people, it also came to a really bad dude named Zaheer who was trapped in this prison in the middle of nowhere. See, I had issues guy. with that, but I talked it out with DJ. So this guy has been in a box, no bigger than what we're like what we're at right now. Yeah, but like up for years. There. And he I'm like, how can he be a master airbender in no time? But DJ pointed out that he's so bad of a martial yeah. artist mm -hmm. that he can master airbending. Yeah, because he was bad out. enough yeah. Yeah. as a martial artist and a mastermind that he had to get locked up without any bending. And now he has bending yeah. Dude. Yeah. and air bending of all of them. And the, so. way, oh, the way he does it too when he grabs the guard. And he slams him against that grate so and he steals good. the keys and then he whips everybody in. And then he goes frees his friends. Yep. I, need, I need Tenzin to beat him. I need for me, for my soul to feel happy at the end of this season, I need Tenzin. You need a 1v1. I want him to rip his shirt off again. <laughs> yeah, I need to rip his shirt off Ow. and I want them to bend it out. Air bend it. So, <laughs> mm, he's, I think he's mm. the first person in like the show to really use air bending offensively. No one, they're usually like, It's usually it's a defensive. defensive. Power, yeah, right? yeah, yeah. They're, they're usually running away, but he's like, nope, I'm gonna hit these people in the face with a mm. with an air whip or something like that, and then air bam, whip. and then so I dig him. And Zaheer immediately got all of his criminal buddies who are awesome, who are awesome, freaking awesome, and super freaking cool awesome. fighters. Can we talk about out of that? prison? Those yeah. are, that was some of the best bending we've seen oh, in the show. So with the, the water bender chick who like who does not like water who whip arms. Arm. Oh, I was so good. She murdered some people though. Oh yeah, she oh, straight up murder, murder, and the first convertibles. Time. People have been <laughs> murdered. She threw a guy into a fiery pit. Yeah, yeah. I don't think that's happening. And there's the show a dude before. who can turn rocks into a lava glide. Yeah, and he's and an earth bender. Throw it around. He's not a fire bender. No, he's not a fire bender because he can compress. And compress rocks at such a high speed and pressure fiction. that they turn he into only, a lava. The dude only block. brought like three rocks and he escaped that's from all yeah, but that's three needed. rocks. He's like, all that's he all I need. Was three rocks. Like, dude, if you brought a boulder, I would have destroyed something. So here, then uh, he goes undercover in the air temple with all of Tenzin's children. How do you guys it's not so know? obvious. It was so obvious. How do you, guys never trust the dude that that's that's that buff and has like a scar. scar you right know here. he's done some stuff. His scar mm -hmm. here too. You know he's done. And he's like a stuff. master airbender, yeah. even though he's supposed to be like brand new. Tenzin's youngest is like, be the leaf, and he's like, sure. Sure, I am yeah. the leaf. No yeah. problem, I did it. I don't trust them. Well, obviously you shouldn't. Other big news, Mako and Bolin, who were orphans their entire lives, oh. finally mm. met their family. Their it's family? very big yeah. ass Great. family. It's a huge, huge family. family, and it's a big moment for them because they had to kind of band together and it's really informed their characters that they didn't have anyone to depend on. Yeah. And now all of a sudden they have a connection to other people, and they have other people to worry about, and a, I think it's a great development for them. Yeah. It's yeah. also kind of unfortunate as well because it seems that their family had no idea about their father as well. Oh, that Being their parents murdered. were dead. Exactly. Yeah. So that was also kind of tragic, but very humanizing, very, yep. and adds to the character of Mako and Bolin. So yep. I and great to it. have Definitely. kind of like a mature emotional moment in what is supposed to be a kids show, and right. it shows the depth of this series. Another thing about these Airbenders, while Korra and Tenzin are trying to get them to join the Air Nation, mm -hmm. other people have more nefarious plans. Namely, yeah. the Earth Queen is kidnapping airbenders and trying to turn them into an army. Her own personal the, super army. The Earth Kingdom, like Ba Sing Se, has always been corrupt throughout the entire series. The Dai Li has, the, what, they've always been evil. Yeah. Mm. That's true. The, the Dai Li is, is like the opposite of the White Lotus because they are actually really powerful and always hard to beat up. They're like secret security. They are the opposite. Service. They're like, oh, this is actually going to be difficult to beat yeah. up these guys with their hand gloves that like yeah. do that. Oh, yeah, they have like metal yeah. super Coolest gloves. Thing. In the latest episode, we get to even uncover more things about Lin Bei Feng. She has a sister, a half sister named Su Yin, who is obviously uh, Toph's other daughter. I yeah, guess? she had daughters with two different men. Ooh. Something that Lin is really upset about. Yeah. She she blames her sister for the breakup of her parents' marriage, and which is why. crazy. Yeah, and they're opposite personalities. Mm. Like Lynn, we all know is Captain it's Chief of the police. Cranky. Yeah, super. Mm. I love her so much. She yeah, sits like stern. this. If you she look at like her in the man. back, she sits like this. Yeah, she might like, as well be like man. this. I love her so much. Yeah. Yeah. I want her to be my mom. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> but then Suyin is more of like, I guess, I mean, a hippie for lack of a better term. Yeah, like yeah. she's a, a dancer. She's yeah. a yeah. dancer who married an engineer and she raises kids by giving them all the freedom in the world yeah. to do what they want. And they invented a sport where they yet, whip metal at each other she, like crazy people. Blind, and she built the city? 
Can yeah, I, she built an entire metal can city. I, can I say selfishly, I'm kind of upset that everybody can metal bend now. I don't like the fact that it's something everybody can do. Uh, like, it was, she was so special, Toph, for having that. Now everybody's like, oh, we're going to make sports out of it. Look, look at this flower. I can make it bend like plastic. That's you know? true. So Emperor Zuko is back. You might not know a whole bunch about him because you didn't see the first. As you may be aware, he was the antagonist of the first series. Right. And he became a good guy. And then he kind of, he taught Aang firebending, which was great. And he, now he's just, he's the fire lord. He's the fire lord. Fire okay, lord. so he used lord. to be a bad guy, now a good guy. Yes. He's yes. super cool and mysterious, and we haven't seen him or what he's been up to for like 40 years. I'm sad though, because he hasn't really done anything super cool yet, except be cool by being there. Yeah, yeah with a but, cool scar and an effing dragon. A dragon. He, where did he get a dragon from? If anybody's going to get a dragon, it has, it to, has Zuko. to be him. It has yeah, to be Zuko. It's legit. But that dragon is awesome. It, it, the firebending that that dragon did was great. But it saddens me that the only firebending we've seen him do really so far is just these regular firebends. Yeah. He's got to come out with like the. He will. That's how they're probably going to do it. He and Tenzin are going to team up on that one guy. I want it to be <gasps> Tenzin by himself. I want it to be Tenzin by himself, but if somebody had to no. jump in, it's got to be Zuko. They're going to team what up. If, it's going to be what so if good. He, it turns out because like if lightning bending is an offshoot of fire bending, what if he like laser bends and he can well, like that's kind of freaking like shoot plasma? goddamn lasers? Well, the Fire Lord has to be like the most powerful firebender in all the land, right? Should be. So I need to see some cool moves from the guy. Definitely. I need to see some near murder. And um, the fact that he controls the White Lotus and was able to capture the four kind of mm -hmm. speaks to his strength, so and he definitely looks, powerful. He looks just like his uncle, too. So another integral character that we were introduced to is Opal, who is Sue's daughter, and she is the other newfound airbender who they're trying to recruit. All right. Here's my theory. You want to hear my theory? Oh yeah! All right. So we Give notice we notice that Bay Fong is like she's like I don't want to talk to Opal. I don't yeah. want to talk to her. It's because it's her daughter. Whoa! It's her daughter. That's my theory. With Tenzin, because Tenzin and and Lin Bay Fong used to date. Whoa! Whoa! Secret love child. My opinions on this season so far is it's been really good, especially this episode in particular because it was written by Michael Dante DiMartino. You can always tell when they're written by him because I think he captures the humor of the series because mm -hmm. he's the creator, one of the creators, so I think it was really good. So far, I'm digging it. I'm digging it. I'm looking forward. I need to see some fights. I need okay. I need to see some fights. That's, That's what true. I need. I love this season. It makes me very, very hopeful for the series. I was a little bit weird about the first uh, first season was okay, second season was meh, but I am very hopeful for Studio Mir because they're supposed to produce the entire season. So I feel like the trajectory of the story is going to follow through. Um, I'm so, I'm really excited to see how they're going to bring it. They still have a lot of world building to do since now they decided to travel. Um, so I don't know, I just can't wait, it's great. Um, like I said, I was a little disappointed in season two, but this 100% brought it back for me, 100%. Who do you want to murder the bad guy? Tenzin Who or Zuko? Who do I want to murder? <sighs> I think it has to be Zuko, only because we haven't seen much of Zuko yet. I, I've already seen a lot of Tenzin. I get him. Um, as much as I want to see him fight, I need to see Zuko fight. Me I too. have always loved Zuko. It's been too long. So, Matt, what do you think of the season so far? Well, I'm really enjoying it. So, a little background. I'd never seen this show before, and they asked me to do the Legend of Korra TV show show. So, for the last two days, <laughs> I have done nothing but watch this show, and I marathon the entire series just to do this. Um, so I really enjoyed it because I never saw Avatar, so this is all I know. And I thought season one was effing dope. Wasn't I thought it? it was the best. Amon. I love the the social inequality and like dealing with the reality of a world where there's benders and non-benders and how non-benders would feel about it. Season two, I didn't like when it was the different art studio. Now it's back to the real one and it looks fucking awesome. Uh, and this season, but in the season two, how did you feel about the uh, episodes about Avatar one? I thought they were really cool. Those I thought they were, were really, really cool. I liked how they altered the mythology without really affecting anything major, and it really gave us an idea of why there has to be an Avatar, which I don't know how well that was set up in the first series, but it really cleared up my understanding, and I feel, feel like the possibilities for this season are really wide open because we're seeing the world, because we're meeting old characters again, and we're building up a new mythology. I don't know how many seasons of this show Nickelodeon intends to do, two more, I think. but I I hope there's a few more, more than, than Avatar, because they're really setting up a grander story than we've seen so far. So I'm stoked to see the rest of it. And frankly, you know, the fans of these, these series have always been really, really cool and really active online and really mm -hmm. passionate. People have been telling me to watch these shows for years. So I'm really excited to be a part of that. Who do you want to murder the bad guys? Honestly? Zuko or Tenzin? 
Neither. I want to see Ton Rock sacrifice himself for his daughter. He's a good oh, bender too. He's I think that that too. would be really poetic, and I think that that's like the right way to go with the character because he's kind of boring. Mm. So give him some significance, and I think losing her father would send Korra in a really mm. interesting direction mm. as she continues to grow into her role as the that's Avatar. True. Folks, thank you so much for watching the TV show show. Please tweet at us with the hashtag TV show show about this week's upcoming episodes, which we're going to review on Monday, so we can read all your tweets on the show. So excited to be covering it. If you want to check out The Legend of Korra with us, it's on Nickelodeon on Friday nights, 8 and 8.30, back to back. Ooh, booyah, baby. Two yeah. episodes in a row. Two What's happening week? to me? Ooh, I need to buy Upa a saddle. Upa? Upa. Yeah. Not Appa. Is that this like is a cross Appa. between what? Oogie and Appa? Yeah. Exactly. Oh. Everybody thinks this is Appa. This is my airbending. Upa. Upa. Why are you chopping his back? Cause I feel like that's friend. not nice. When you become Avatar and airbender, you get your own. This no. is mine. It's Upa. Upa's pretty small. Is he gonna grow? He's a baby, all right? He's a baby. Stop hating. Ah! <laughs>